Having low libido or suffering from ED are two of the most common signs that you could have low testosterone. But the good news is there are four simple ways that you can naturally boost your levels. Five years ago, I was overweight, burnt out and depressed. But I figured out exactly how to double my testosterone levels naturally. And since then, I've helped hundreds of men like the ones you're seeing on your screen do exactly the same. First up, we want to clean up your diet. If you've got any of the symptoms of low testosterone, I'm going to guess that you're carrying a little bit of excess body fat. The number one thing that you can do to boost your testosterone levels naturally is to lose that body fat. Scientific studies have proven time and time again that leaner men almost always have higher testosterone levels simply because their body is healthier. And when your body is healthier, it's going to be producing more testosterone. The other big benefit of being leaner is that it's easier to build lean muscle mass. Okay, so how are we actually going to go about doing that? Because cleaning up your diet is no easy feat. The very first thing that we need to do is making sure that you're eating the right amount of food, the right quantity. To do that, we need to know your maintenance calorie number, and then we need to make sure that you're in a caloric deficit. So if you're brand new here, let me quickly explain what all of that means. Your maintenance calorie number is the number of calories that you would need to eat and drink if you just wanted to stay at the same weight. The simplest way to calculate your maintenance calorie number is to take your body weight in pounds, not in kilos, in pounds, and to multiply it by 14. Now listen, that is a rough and ready, very rudimentary equation, but it's going to give you a pretty good estimate. Given that we want you to lose that excess body fat though, we then need to put you in a caloric deficit where you are burning more calories than you are eating and drinking. Now at this stage, most personal trainers and nutritionists will simply tell you to eat 500 calories less than the maintenance calorie number you've just calculated every single day. So let's say that your maintenance calorie number came out at 2,500. Most personal trainers and nutritionists would then advise you to eat 2,000 calories every single day, creating that 500 calorie deficit. And the reason they advise that is that because there are 3,500 calories in one pound of body fat. Seven days in a week, 500 calorie deficit, seven times 500 is 3,500. So by putting you in a 500 caloric deficit every single day, you should be losing about one pound of fat per week, which on the face of it, sounds pretty good but i've got a couple of problems with doing it that way now while i do believe that losing about a pound of fat a week is a very sustainable rate for most guys i wouldn't advise that you take this approach this approach is flawed for two reasons firstly it doesn't give you any room for failure there's no flexibility it assumes that you act and that you live like a robot that every day is the same and that nothing will ever go wrong but you and I both know that life is not like that. I expect you've got a busy job. Maybe you've got a partner, kids, pets, whatever it might be. You're gonna have good days, but you're also gonna have bad days. So try to stick to the same calorie number every single day, whilst in theory, sounds great, in practice, in real life, isn't very sustainable. And my second issue with that approach is that it encourages you to be pretty restrictive with your food. Eating 500 calories less every single day is like cutting out a whole meal. I don't want you to do that. I want you to be fueled. I want you to be energized. So this is what I recommend my clients do instead. First thing, we're gonna take your calorie deficit number. So in the example that I gave you earlier, that would be 2000. We're then gonna multiply that number by seven because there's seven days in a week. So that's 14,000. Now you have a weekly calorie allowance. You can now decide how and when you spend that calorie allowance on a bigger time horizon, which gives you a lot more freedom and it gives you a lot more flexibility, but it also gives you room for error. It means that if you mess up on one day, which you probably will because you're a human being and not a robot, let's say it's a Wednesday, you're not tempted to throw in the towel and say, oh, well, diet starts again Monday. Secondly, rather than just telling you to eat 500 calories less every single day, what I'm going to encourage you to do is move 250 calories more and eat 250 calories less. Because if we move more, we're living a more active lifestyle. And as a result, our maintenance calorie number, which is based on our physiology, our age, our weight, our height and our sex, but also how active we are, goes up and that means you can attack your deficit from both sides and if you're eating 250 calories less and moving 250 calories more you're still creating that 500 calorie daily deficit that you need to burn one pound of fat per week so i said earlier that a very quick and easy way to calculate your maintenance calorie number is to take your body weight in pounds and multiply it by 14 but like i said it's a pretty rough and ready rudimentary way to do that if you want a more precise number, and if you want me to help you to calculate a precise fat loss calorie target and give you that weekly calorie allowance that we talked about, you can go ahead and click the first link in the description that's gonna be underneath this video and use my completely free calorie calculator. I'm gonna send you personalized nutrition targets and I'm gonna take the time to explain 
all your numbers to you so that you have complete peace of mind that you're eating the right amount to help you reach your goals. So if you want to do that, click the first link in the description it's underneath this video. It's only going to take you 30 seconds and it's completely free. So the quantity of the calories, the number of calories that you eat on a day-to-day -day basis, creating that calorie deficit is what's going to help you with the fat loss. But the quality of the calories that you eat is going to dictate how easy it is for you. I actually think these days way too much importance and focus and attention is put on the quantity of the calories that we're eating and nowhere near enough is talking about the quality of the calories because it's all well and good creating that calorie deficit. But if you were to just eat nothing but McDonald's, you're going to feel awful while you do it. And there are people who do that. They take these numbers and go, oh, well, it's all just eating McDonald's all day, every day. And it's like, yeah, you could do that. And yes, you would lose the body fat because you are in an energy deficit. Your body has no choice but to use the stored energy, the stored fat as fuel, and as a result, burn the body fat. But you're going to feel absolutely terrible. The quality of your calories is going to affect your gut health, the amount of inflammation that you're holding onto, but it's also going to affect the hormonal response to your food. So in particular here, I'm talking about the two hunger hormones that you've got, leptin and ghrelin. So leptin is kind of in charge of deciding how full you feel, and you want that to be nice and high. You want to feel full all the time, particularly if you are trying to lose weight and body fat. And then you've got ghrelin, which is your hunger hormone. It's going to tell you how hungry you feel at any given point. Now, obviously you want the ghrelin to be nice and low because if you're walking around all day trying to lose weight, trying to burn body fat, and you're feeling hungry all the time, it's going to feel a heck of a lot harder. And like I say, the quality of the calories, the quality of the food that you are eating is really going to influence those hormone levels. If you're eating nothing but processed food, junk food, refined sugar, it's gonna be constantly spiking your ghrelin levels and your leptin levels are gonna be really low. That's not a place that you want to be, but it's not just gonna have an impact on your hunger hormones, on your leptin and your ghrelin. It's also gonna have an impact on your stress hormone, which is called cortisol. The worse quality of food that you eat, the higher your cortisol level is going to climb. And this is very important because cortisol has an inverted relationship to testosterone. In other words, when cortisol is high, testosterone has to be low. It is not humanly possible for you to elevate, for you to boost your testosterone levels naturally if you are stressed out. Now, of course, stress is a very convoluted, multifaceted topic, which we're gonna talk more about later in this video. But one of the best things that you can do to positively influence your cortisol level to lower it down is to improve the quality of the food that you are eating. To do that, I recommend you base your diet on five key principles. These are the same principles that I base my diet on and the same principles that I recommend my clients base their diet on. Principle number one is to make sure that your diet is balanced. You don't wanna be skimping on any of your macronutrients. You don't wanna be demonizing carbs and you certainly don't wanna be demonizing fat. You want your diet to be filled with all three of the macronutrients, protein, carbs, and fats. Principle number two is that you want your diet to be omnivorous. You wanna be getting your protein from lean meats, but you wanna be getting your micronutrients and your fiber from plants, fruits, vegetables. Principle number three is that you want your diet to be nutrient dense and full of whole foods. Again, this is about improving the quality of your diet and cutting out as much of the processed food and junk as you possibly can and focusing on single ingredient whole foods. Principle number four is that you want your diet to be quick, easy and simple. So I have the same breakfast every single day and then I have five meals that I rotate throughout the week for lunches and dinners. And every single one of them I can prepare from scratch in less than 20 minutes. And then last but not least, principle number five, probably the most important of them all, is to make your diet enjoyable. This is super important because if you don't enjoy your diet, you're not gonna be able to sustain it. If you can't sustain it, if you can't be consistent with it, you're not gonna get the results. Ultimately, you want your diet to never feel like a diet. And the best way to do that is to sprinkle in healthy snacks and treats every single day. And that's gonna keep you away from wanting to binge at the weekend. So I'll give you a few examples of what I have every single day as my healthy snacks and treats. It's not to say that you have to have these, but these are what I have found I enjoy. So mid morning, every single day, I'll have 100 grams of blueberries. And then mid afternoon, I will have a protein chocolate mousse. And then for my treats, I'll have two or three squares of dark chocolate after my lunch and my dinner. And I'll also have a can of Fanta Lemon Zero Sugar every single day. And like I say, this is so important because it makes my diet enjoyable. When it's enjoyable, it never feels like a diet. It never feels like I'm going to work hard towards it. And it makes hitting my goals so much easier. And there's actually specific foods that you can eat which are going to help you to naturally boost your testosterone levels. And that's because they contain specific vitamins and minerals. First up, you've got eggs. Then you've got fatty fish like salmon or tuna. 
You've also got green veg like spinach and kale, and then some more specialty, some more exotic items. You've got Brazil nuts, pomegranate, and blueberries. The first three that I mentioned there, the eggs, the fatty fish, and those particular vegetables, are all rich in vitamin D, omega-3s, magnesium, and zinc, which are all gonna help with the production of testosterone. And then the other few that I mentioned, well, pomegranate and blueberries are very high in antioxidants, and the Brazil nuts are high in something called selenium. The last thing that I wanna talk about with your nutrition, and arguably just as important if you're trying to lose body fat, is your hydration. You wanna be making sure that you're drinking lots of water and staying hydrated. But listen, I am 100% sure that I am not the first man in the world to tell you that that is important. But I think a lot of people struggle with their water for two reasons. First and foremost, because they're not focused on it. And number two is because they don't actually understand, no one's ever told them why drinking lots of water and staying hydrated is important. Water is like your body's secondary energy system. The calories that you get from food are your body's primary source of fuel, but most people don't realize just how sensitive our brains are to dehydration. If you're just one to 2% dehydrated, your brain starts to switch off non-essential processes in your body. And what that looks like in real life is that you start to feel lethargic. And we've all been there. We start to feel very lazy. Suddenly, sitting in our pants on the sofa, watching Netflix, not getting up and moving and burning more calories, sounds very appealing. And as a result, you get less done. And the less you get done, the fewer calories you're going to burn, the harder it is going to be for you to burn body fat. In contrast to that, if you drink lots of water and stay hydrated all day, you're going to have mental clarity, focus, drive, and all day energy. Every single cell in your body needs water to function correctly. That's how important staying hydrated, drinking lots of water is. And it's funny because when people ask me how much water should I be drinking, I normally just say more because I know with pretty high degree of certainty that they're not drinking enough. But if you want a specific number, I would say to aim for at least three liters of water a day. And drinking water really isn't that tough. I actually drink three liters of water pretty much every single morning by 9 a.m. And I'm not saying that as a flex, I'm saying that because if I can do it by 9 a.m., I'm pretty sure you can do it by 9 p.m. And the way I do that is very straightforward. I wake up at 6 a.m. and have 500 milliliters of water with an electrolyte powder. Then when I go to the gym at 7 a.m., I take a two liter bottle of water, just like this one that is sitting right here next to me. And I will drink that before, during, and on my way home from the gym. When I get back from the gym, I'll have another 500 milliliters of water with some protein powder, my post-workout shake, if you like. So there you have it, three liters of water by 9 a.m. Like I say, you don't need to do that. But if I can do that by 9 a.m. and then go on to have another three liters throughout the day, you can definitely do it by 9 p.m. The reason you're struggling to drink enough water is because, like I said, you're not focused on it. You need to make it a habit. And the best way to do that is to drink a lot of water early in the morning because it sends signals to your brain that you should keep doing it. Okay, so that's nutrition. I've given you a ton to think about there, but I wanted to give you as much value as I possibly could to help you lose weight and burn the body fat because, as I said right at the beginning of this video, the best thing that you can do to naturally boost your testosterone levels is not to take supplements or do specific types of workouts, both of which we're gonna talk about, by the way. The number one thing that you need to do is get on top of your diet, get on top of your nutrition. Okay, now that we've got your diet in check, we need to get you in the gym. And if you add these three elements into your workouts, you're gonna feel your testosterone skyrocket in real time. First of all, you need to be prioritizing lifting weights and deprioritizing long form steady state cardio. Studies have been done that have literally proven that long form steady state cardio actually reduces testosterone, whereas lifting weights, resistance training increases it. Secondly, you wanna be doing a mix of compound movements and explosive movements. So compound movements would be anything like a squat, a bench press, a deadlift, lunges, hip thrusts, whereas explosive movements would be anything like box jumps, sprints, or skipping. Thirdly, and just as important, throughout the weeks of your workout program, you wanna make sure that you are progressively overloading. Progressive overload is a very simple principle, and it's one of the governing principles of how we get better, fitter, stronger in the gym. It is simply where you increase the amount of volume that you are lifting over a period of time. So let's take a very straightforward example, I don't know, the bench press, for example. Let's say you can do 60 kilos and you can do 10 reps and you can do that three sets, okay? So that would be 60 kilos times by 10, that's 600. We're gonna multiply that by three, that'd be 1,800 kilograms. So your bench press volume on day one, week one, because you're gonna start with chest day, aren't you? Let's be honest, <laughs> is gonna be 1,800 kilos. 
The next time you come to do bench press, so let's say in the second week, your goal is to increase your bench press volume from 1,800. And the best way to do that is to lift more weight. But you've also got the option of increasing the number of reps that you do per set, or you could even add on a fourth set. And that's progressive overload. You really don't need to overcomplicate this. You'll have 10 different trainers telling you 10 different ways to do it. But the principle is to just increase your volume over a period of time. The most important thing that you can do for your workouts though, is to give yourself some structure. If you're new to the gym, or if you're just getting back into it after a long absence, the hardest part is gonna to be to start, to actually get yourself signed up and walking through those doors. Because gyms can be intimidating places, everybody is embarrassed when they first start going or start going back. So what I recommend you do is keep it super simple. Aim for three 45 minute full body workouts each week. I would suggest that you split them up onto Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, or something like that. But the goal really is to leave a day, or at least a day, I should say, is rest in between the workouts to allow your body to recover a little bit. Taking that approach, doing full body workouts, means that you're gonna use all of your major muscles multiple times per week. And that's very important because the bigger the muscle, the more calories you're gonna burn. That's because the bigger the muscle, the more oxygen is required to contract the muscle. And if you think about it, the more oxygen that's required means the harder your lungs are gonna to have to work to bring in more fresh oxygen. And as a result, the harder your heart is gonna to have to work to pump the oxygen in your blood to the muscle so it can contract. I also appreciate you're probably gonna be up against it four times. So to make your workouts as time efficient as possible, what we wanna be doing is minimizing the number of different exercises that you are doing. So you don't have to be walking around the gym and loading plates and unloading plates and maximizing the amount of volume that you do per exercise. So rather than doing three sets of 10 and doing like seven or eight exercises, what I recommend you do is do four or five exercises, but for each exercise do four sets of 15 or maybe even 20. Not only are you gonna get better at specific exercises faster, and remember exercises as well as being exercises are also like skills, you're also gonna get stronger faster and you're gonna burn more calories because you're wasting less time moving around the gym and you're spending more time actually working out. Speaking of spending more time working out, please, whatever you do, make sure that you're not sitting in the gym on your phone. The other day, I went to the gym and I went to use the first piece of equipment that was in my workout program for that day and there was a guy sitting on it, fair enough. So I went to the second piece of equipment and I decided I'll do, I'll do my four sets here now and then I'll go back to that first exercise afterwards. Anyway, long story short, I was able to do 12 sets in the time that the guy who was on the piece of equipment I wanted to use did three. And that is all because he was just sitting there do scrolling through social media, which is absolutely insane. If you think about that, extrapolate that over a period of time, where I was able to do four times more than him in the same period of time, I'm gonna get four times the results. So if you're sitting on your phone for half of your gym session, which you might not even realize you're doing, by the way, until we bring it from the subconscious into the conscious part of your brain, you are going to get exponentially better results. So just as important as what you do in the gym, actually it's definitely more important is what you do out at the gym. And the five habits that I'm gonna talk you through now are gonna be the absolute best ones that you can implement today, which are gonna naturally boost your levels. And that's because they're gonna do two things. First and foremost, they're gonna reduce your stress. Remember earlier, I said that cortisol, your stress hormone, has an inverted relationship with testosterone. So when cortisol is high, testosterone has to be low. And secondly, these habits are gonna improve the quality and probably the quantity of the amount of sleep you're getting. You wanna be getting as much sunlight as you possibly can. Now I appreciate, depending on where you live, if you're in the northern part of the US or certainly the UK, that's gonna to be tough going into winter. But take advantage of it where you can. Honestly, sunlight is like free. Since I moved down here to Spain, my physique has drastically improved. I've not really changed anything else. My diet is pretty consistent. I still train as hard as I did when I was back in the UK but suddenly I'm getting a lot more sunlight and my physique has blown up to the point where I regularly get people asking me if I'm on sex now, which by the way, I'm not and I never have been. You know what it's like when you go on holiday and you just feel like hornier in the sun. What do you think that is? Scientifically, we know what the sunlight is doing for us. It's giving us a natural form of a very high quality vitamin D. And vitamin D is one of the most important vitamins, one of the most important nutrients and minerals that we need for the healthy production of testosterone. Secondly, you wanna be limiting the amount of stimulants that you're having. Now, in the short term, caffeine and nicotine can absolutely 
increase your testosterone levels. But the problem with caffeine and nicotine is that they are stimulants. And as a result, they're going to have a negative effect on your sleep. So even though you think you look like a badass whilst you're smoking that fat cigar and drinking your 12th coffee of the day, you're not helping yourself because it's interfering with your sleep. And remember, all of these habits are about optimizing your sleep. Third up is socializing. This is so underrated, particularly today in the era that we live in with toxic masculinity where men are barely allowed to breathe without being called a misogynist. But spending time with other men, preferably other men who have higher levels of testosterone and in competitive environments, is gonna be so good for you. You don't have to be fighting them in a boxing ring or get into a UFC octagon or sprinting down the road with them or anything silly like that. But just spending time with the right caliber of men is gonna elevate your thought process. It's gonna change your mindset and it's gonna stimulate the release of more testosterone. Your brain recognizes the situation that you are in and it will rise to the occasion. The other great thing about having a brotherhood of high testosterone men who are out in the world trying to achieve big things is that you hold yourself to a higher standard. One of the things that a lot of people struggle with these days is accountability. Well, if you've got a strong brotherhood of high testosterone friends, which I know is very hard to find these days, you're gonna be held to such a higher standard and you're gonna have so much more accountability. It's gonna make hitting your goals so much easier. The fourth habit is cold exposure. Now listen, you do not have to be jumping in ice baths to achieve this. I appreciate that it can be somewhat overwhelming if you've never done it before, or just might be out of reach because you might not have an ice bath within 50 miles of your house. And that's absolutely fine. A cold shower in the morning, I do 45 seconds every single morning as soon as I wake up, will do wonders for your dopamine levels, for your mood, for your energy, and for your testosterone indirectly. But if you can find an ice bath, if you can palate an ice bath, it's gonna be worth it because they have been proven to increase your dopamine levels by 500%. The best way to describe it is that when you get out of an ice bath after a couple of minutes, and by the way, as soon as I finish filming this video, I'm about to go and jump in an ice bath at the gym, is that you feel like you can conquer the world. You literally feel like you could achieve absolutely anything. And listen, I'll hold my hands up and say that I used to be the biggest cynic out there when it came to cold exposure and ice baths. But then in the start of this year, I got involved and I have to say, I am eating my words. I was completely wrong. Last, but by no means least, in fact, probably the most important of the five habits is gonna be making sure that you are walking a lot. This is what works so well for Paul. Paul's a former client of mine who's in his early 40s. He's got two kids and a very busy job. But he lost 30 pounds in just three months largely from his commitment to his walking. Yes, he was in a calorie deficit. Yes, he was working out two or three times a week from home. But what really moved the needle for him, what really helped him to lose so much weight in such a short space of time was his step count. Paul's a keen golfer and he realized that he could pair what he loved, the passion of his, with his fitness goals. So he would regularly hit 18,000 steps a day just by getting on the course after work or at weekends. But here's the thing, you don't have to walk 18,000 steps a day to lose body fat, and you don't even have to like golf. Paul's an outlier, but he's the best example that I can show you of what a difference a high step count can make. Walking is such an underrated exercise, if you can even call it an exercise, and it's a high leverage activity because of all the amazing benefits that you get from it. And you can multitask while you do it. If you're walking at a brisk pace, you'll do about a thousand steps every eight minutes. That means if you walk for just an hour a day, you'll hit 8,000 steps. And that is gonna help you to burn an additional three to 400 calories above your current maintenance calorie number. And if you do it at a brisk pace, you'll also be activating your zone two cardio, which is great for your heart health. But probably my favorite thing about walking is that it activates something called your parasympathetic nervous system. And this is the part of your nervous system which helps you to relax. Have you ever wondered why you suddenly feel less stressed or more creative when you're outside. That's your parasympathetic nervous system kicking in, changing your environment, getting outside, fresh air, maybe even some sunlight if you're lucky. You can't see what it's doing to you on the outside in real time, like if you go to the gym and get a pump on, but it's doing wonders for you on the inside. Use it as an opportunity to listen to an audiobook or a podcast, stick a playlist on, call a friend, but best of all, switch your Zoom meetings to walking meetings. Because I can guarantee you, it's been like four years now, everybody's sick of Zoom. So if you can, stop having to sit in front of your computer for eight hours a day, talking to people about the weather and what they did at the weekend, because listen up. 
No one cares. And here's the thing, not all of your walking has to be purposeful. You don't have to like put it in your calendar, although that is actually a very good hack, which a lot of my clients use, by the way, they block out time for their workouts and for their steps. But you're gonna do two to 3,000 steps a day just existing, commuting, playing with your kids, move around the house, whatever it might be. So really all you need to think about consciously is 6,000 steps a day. That's 45 minutes. And what's better than a 45 minute walk at the start of the day with a nice hot coffee or a 45 minute walk at the end of the day to de-stress you and start to wind you down. So we've talked about your diet, we've talked about your exercise, we've talked about your habits. Lastly, we need to talk about your supplements. And I put these last on purpose because of the four, they are the least important. Now, before I get into it, I wanna clarify two things. First and foremost, these supplements are all legal. Secondly, none of these supplements are gonna break the bank. But it's also important to remember that the clue is in the name when it comes to supplements. They should be used to supplement a healthy lifestyle, diet, and workout program. They are not the shortcut. Trust me, you cannot avoid the hard work. If you want the shortcut, if you want the best hack I can give you, it's to do the work because you're gonna spend so much time, so much money trying to get around only to realize that the only way out is through. And if you wanna see results from taking these supplements, you're gonna to need to take them consistently for an extended period of time. They're not designed to make you an overnight success story. I had a message from a client earlier this week who's only just joined my coaching program and he said, I've been taking the supplements for a week and I can't feel anything. It's like, yeah, it's gonna take a little bit longer than that. I'd also strongly encourage you to do your own research into these supplements before you start taking any of them. I'm certainly not prescribing them to you. I'm just gonna tell you what I take what a lot of my clients take and what we've all found helps to naturally boost our testosterone levels. So first up is one called diaspartic acid. This amino acid plays a key role in synthesizing luteinizing hormone, which in turn stimulates the production of testosterone. And there's a lot of research to show that diaspartic acid can lead to significant increase in testosterone levels, muscle growth, and strength. Second up is zinc. This essential mineral is crucial for the proper functioning of the male reproductive system. And zinc deficiency is directly linked to lower testosterone levels. So supplementing with zinc can help you get back to normal levels. It can also improve your sperm quality and enhance your hormonal response. Next up, we've got omega-3s. These are essential fatty acids that can support your heart health and enhance your testosterone through their anti-inflammatory effect. Inflammation in the body is known to reduce testosterone levels because of the disrupting effect that it can have on your endocrine system, your hormone health. The fourth supplement is vitamin D. Now, ideally, you wouldn't need to take this one because you'd get your vitamin D naturally from the sunlight. However, I'm very aware that a lot of people watching this are gonna be in North America and the UK, where it's cold and dark for six months of the year. So the best and the simplest and the easiest thing that we can do is to supplement with vitamin D. The problem with vitamin D supplementation is that most of the recommendations are way too low. So I'd recommend that you supplement with at least 4,000 IUs per day. Vitamin D actually acts more like a hormone in the body than a vitamin. And there are actually receptors that enable the absorption of vitamin D in your testes. And your testes, if you didn't know, is where your testosterone is produced. And study after study after study has shown a positive correlation between vitamin D levels and testosterone. Next up, we've got ashwagandha, which is a herb. The reason I recommend this one is that ashwagandha has been shown to reduce your cortisol level. Although what's also interesting is that studies are finding that ashwagandha can have a positive effect on your thyroid function which if you have a well-functioning thyroid is gonna increase your energy levels and your drive. Last, but certainly not least, in fact, I probably should have spoken about this one first because without a doubt it is always number one on my list of best supplements out there, and that is creatine. Specifically, you wanna be taking creatine monohydrate. And I used to recommend that you take five grams per day. And by the way, that is everybody, men, women, children, old people, it doesn't matter. But I've actually now doubled my dosage from five up to 10 because the latest research is showing that that is a much more efficacious amount to take every single day. Creatine is used to enhance athletic performance and it can increase the intensity and the frequency that you're able to work out at. The more you can work out, the more calories that you're gonna burn, but also the more testosterone you're gonna be producing. But not only that, creatine has also been found to directly influence certain cellular pathways that lead to the synthesis of more testosterone. So there you have it, guys, the four ways that you can naturally boost your testosterone levels, just to give you a very quick recap. First of all, is you wanna be getting on top of your diet, making sure you're consuming the right quantity of calories, but also making sure the quality of those calories is as high as you can get it. Second up, your exercise. You wanna be doing resistance training. You wanna be mixing in a mixture of compound movements and explosive movements. Third up, 
those healthy habits. You want to be making sure that you're getting outside, getting as much sunlight and as many steps as you can. You want to be making sure that you're limiting your stimulants and of course limiting alcohol. You want to be socializing with other men as much as possible and you want to be trying to expose yourself to some cold. And then last but not least, the supplements that I just talked you through. But guys, before I leave you, the most important thing that you can do above everything that I've just said today is to be consistent with all of this because it's all well and good trying to pick and choose little bits out of what I've just told you and doing it for a week or two. But if you do all of this stuff for eight to 12 weeks, I guarantee you the results that you're gonna get are going to be profound. Now, if you like the sound of what I've said today, but it all feels a little bit too overwhelming and you'd like a roadmap, if you'd like some help, a blueprint of how to do all of this, that's exactly what my coaching program's for. So if you go ahead and click the second link in the description that's underneath this video, you can apply for my program. It's only gonna take you 30 seconds and I'll send you a message in the next 24 hours to see if you're a good fit for it. Anyway, I'll leave the video here. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please don't forget to like the video and of course, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.